All right, welcome to section two. This is the modern Windows interface. In this section, we're going to take a look at the start menu and the taskbar. So first, we'll familiarize ourselves with what both of those are, and then we'll spend some time going through how to pin and organize both how to change settings and modify them to work the way you want, and then we'll spend a little bit of time working with the search bar and how to find things using it on your server. So let's move on into taking an overview of the start menu and the task bar. In this video, we'll spend some time working with both the start menu and with the task bar, just getting familiar. Again, if you've worked with the Windows interface before, this may be very familiar and you can move ahead a little quicker. Uh, if this is your first time working with it, feel free to stick around and learn more about the interface at the start menu and task bar. Uh, so here we're logged in to a Windows server and you'll see at the bottom here is the task bar and over here is the start button named as such because back in uh, Windows 95 it actually said start and after much controversy it's back and now shaped like the Windows logo. So you can go ahead and click on start and now you will see what comes down to three main areas here. Uh, now in this first area if we go ahead and expand you'll see you have options for your currently signed in user. Uh, you can manage the settings, lock the workstation, or sign that user out. You have settings, which will quickly move you into the Windows settings where you can make changes. And then you have power settings, which gives you an option to shut down or restart. Uh, you'll see in my example here, there's also disconnect. I am connected over remote desktop to the server. Uh, so that'll give me an option that instead of logging out my session, it'll simply disconnect the remote desktop session so I can log back into it at the same place where I came out. Another thing you may see here is when Windows updates are available, you can either apply those updates and shut down the system or apply those updates and restart the system. In the next column, we have a list of all the programs and the folders for those programs. Uh, so here you'll see a header for the most used, and then you'll see alphabetically the items. Now if you click on any of these headers, you'll be brought in to an area here where you can select the most used, or select quick jump to either the starting letter or symbols or numbers. Uh, so in this case there isn't much on the server, uh, so we're just going to get this simple view no matter what. Then. In the next column, you'll see we have configuration items, which are some tiles that I've worked with. And we have, this is the default here for Windows Server uh, tiles. Now, this section is known as an app group, and you can click on the header and actually move these groups around and set things up however you like. Also, in the Start menu, you can go to the outside here and drag. So if you have many things there and want to get more space, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, we can just keep this nice and small. So that is about it for the start menu. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the taskbar. So we'll close this and in the taskbar, uh, we'll see either pinned applications or applications we currently have open, such as settings here. Uh, you can see that it's open by the line underneath and this here is called the task view and it allows you to get kind of an overhead glance at all the things that may be open on the system. And this will kick you into the search bar, which we'll cover later. Now over at the right side, we have a notification area. Uh, some call it the system tray. And there are icons here either from other applications installed or components of Windows. So in this case, you can see we have network, we have audio, which is disabled on this virtual machine. We have date and time, where you can click in and see a calendar and change date and time settings. So you can right click or left click on most of these and get some sort of context. And of course, those will change based on what the application is or what the item in that area is. So past the date here, you'll see this bubble for the action center. Sometimes you'll see a little badge with a number in there if you have notifications. So if we go in here, you'll see there are notifications. I have one about turning on Windows Spark Screen. Uh, so from here, I can actually take actions. If I right click, I can go in and manage my notification settings. Or if I go ahead and click through, it will launch whatever it needs to to complete the actions for that notification. You'll see at the bottom here, this may not be relevant for anything that you're doing on the server, but 
there are some tiles here for quickly jumping into things like the network or Wi-Fi settings, quick jump to settings, there are notes, tablet to mode, which again is not really relevant for server, airplane mode again, you know, so you really more likely than not will not be working in this action center inside of Windows Server. It's really something that makes a lot more sense in the context of working with Windows 10 as your operating system of choice for your laptop or desktop computer. And we'll go into briefly how to make changes to that action center and actually hide that so you don't even have to think about it anymore on the server level. So that about covers the broad strokes of the start menu and the taskbar.